We actually welcome back to another episode again. Hey, you boys, you swiss. To my jokes, you jokes. How we doing, brother? How we doing, brother? Doing good. My good brother. Doing good. I think that's our fastest intro right there. I thought for sure you'd slip up, but that was clean. Dude, I think I'm getting pretty good at the intros. Not not at the intro of the guests. That that's still god awful at times. Don't get me wrong. It's a hit or miss. That's not even 50-50. I give it 70-30. 70 in the negs. Um just want to make sure we're <laughs> Just want to make sure. 70 in the negs. <laughs> um, <laughs> just curious about how are you guys? Well, obviously you're in different locations, but how's your season is going? You guys still pushing pee and everything and just making sure it's all going good? Yeah. We, uh, what is this pushing pee, round. bro? I you never heard everywhere. about pushing pee? No. Bro, I see it stuff? everywhere, and I'm just, I'm not it's with It's not appropriate, songs. that's for sure. It's a song. Yeah, it is, Joe. Pushing pee is like positivity. Well, it's whatever you make. What, is it mean like the other P word? Like the swear, like, you know, the more vulgar? What do you mean? What I heard is, yeah, the version that I've heard from people is that it's not very appropriate. No. I heard that it's like, no, I haven't heard, I've heard it's like more like, I'm, I'm serious right now. Yeah, dude. Like it's more like, hey, like pushing peas. Like, I what was the? I so looked it I up. have it up I right here. Up. There's there's two there's two definitions. One okay. is like you're a play you're a player, and one is that I'm not gonna I can't really say the other one. <laughs> Give it, shout out to Manscaped here. Slinging blank and selling blank is what I will say. Slinging dope and nope. Oh, I, oh. I, you can't say those words. Okay, I can't say these words. No, you can't. You can't. You know what I can say though? I can say Odd System Twenty for twenty percent off and Doctor Price's electrolytes. Because guess what? Doctor Price's electrolytes is pushing pee. Let me tell you that. You know what else is pushing pee? <laughs> Manscaped. They're pushing pee. And with an even bigger way to push pee is what, Joe? What What can they do to even further to push pee with Manscaped? Like, they can use our promo code. That's true. Holly balls, all caps, That's no true. cap. And you know what's even more push and pee than that? There might be another uh, partnership coming up with them for the. I'm not going to spoil anything. Another partnership for the for the uh, podcast here for the push and pee mm. podcast. <laughs> Look at me, I like that. All right, I want to give a shout out to uh, Crossnet as well because guess what? We're gonna have the co-founder slash CEO on here because we thought outside the box again. A couple episodes were like we got to think outside the realm. Had a lot of players, had the coaches. Let's get more of everybody in here. So we're like, you know what? What's become a big part of the culture in in, uh, in volleyball? Cross night. You see it at youth events. You see it on the beach. You see it on the grass. You see it everywhere. So without further ado, the cross night master. You can, you can handle the heat. Yeah. You can, you can handle the heat. We are now joined by Cross Net CEO slash co-founder Greg Mead. Thank you for hopping on, Greg. How are we doing, brother? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, right back at you, man. Right back at you. Well, where, where are you joining us from right now? I am in Bend, Oregon right now. It's pretty cold. And is is CrossNet out of or- Bend, Oregon or where? Oh, CrossNet. I don't think anyone from, from the CrossNet team has actually ever been to Oregon besides me. But um, no, we're from New England. Um, mm-hmm. Me, my partner, Chris, my brother, and our other co-founder, Mike, we're all from Connecticut. And then we moved down to Miami to catch the sun. Hey, that's not a bad life that's right a, there. That's a nice <laughs> move right there. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, let's get into the let's get into how it all kind of started, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, Crossnet, you are not a volleyball player, um, but how did this game of, I mean, it is a volleyball game. Would you consider it a volleyball game? Or, I mean, yeah, it, absolutely. Uh, no, it yeah, is. Yeah, it yeah. is volleyball game for sure. Um, I mean, how did it all start? And like, where did the idea come about? And going to business with your brother and your friend. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a question I get a lot, but it's always fun to answer it. Um, so Mike, other partner, graduated from college. He's an engineer, wanted to build something besides like a robot, you know, and, and nerd out on that all day. So he came to me one day, wanted to make a, make a product with me because I was doing other e com stuff, entrepreneur stuff. And um, we came up with this idea of this four square volleyball game. We wanted to do the next beach game. We, we really grew up on like Can Jam and those kind of games. So mm. uh, we wanted to do the next one. It's been a while. So we eventually went the next day to Walmart, grabbed badminton nets, um, rigged them together, tape, cut them, whatever. We, we just It was crazy. Um, we played it with, we had invited two or three friends over, played it, super fun. And we're like, holy shit, like we need to actually turn this into a real, real product. This is it. We have it. We have a baby. That fast it happened? How, fa- how fast was that process, would you say? Um, well, within 
48 hours, we had the product, the concept of the business. <laughs> Wait, why volleyball? Like that. We don't play volleyball, no, but we're athletes. We grew up playing soccer, basketball, baseball, but, tennis, you name it. So why did you choose volleyball as a sport you wanted to revolutionize slash make in, reinvent kind of in a way? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think we have an answer for that. We wanted to, we got lucky, I would say, with like having it be a sport because we like sports, obviously, and and growing up playing sports with each other against each other um we wanted to kind of keep it in that niche if that was possible and we did um volleyball just seemed like the most sense because four square evolution yeah. to uh, to there and were, were there any other sports that you had in mind that you're playing around any no. other what were the other ideas were there any ideas oh, or no? so, yeah we had we had a list we had a, this laundry list of ideas we were writing down shit like we had like i think honestly like 40 40 products that we could have came up with we scratched them all there was two left on the list i will always remember and it was a a wall charger speaker so you charge your phone and it's also a speaker and um four square volleyball and uh we picked the four Whoa, those are two completely <laughs> different like you're in two different realms. I was thinking like you had two different games that you'd come up with for the beach, but you have yeah, a no. wall charger and a freaking sport. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to do anything. We want to do another product. And uh, luckily a sport fell into our lap. So we ran with it. We played it. It was fun. And then it took about a year for us to finally get a prototype um, and, and start selling it. Um, right. That we liked because we had to do so many adjustments um, right. We had to figure out what net quality was the best without ripping the, the tension stakes, the poles, the colors, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there was there ever something on that list of forty items where you just kind of laugh about? Where you're like, why would we? I mean, I'm I'm not saying that there is, but is there like an item that you're like, what? Yeah, I'm the sure heck? there was. I, I don't remember anymore. It was five years ago. I wish I wish we kept it. I wish we kept <laughs> all the, it. Would have been really yeah. You cool. should have framed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, I think we were we were putting them on the notepad. We, damn, I wish we would have kept them now. To come to think of it, nah, but no yeah, yeah, there was definitely games. So that's why we scratched. I mean, like there was definitely shitty items on that list, and that's why we scratched off you know forty eight of them. <laughs> all right, so so you made the product. Now you got it all kind of down. What was the kind of the vision, and then how did you guys go about achieving that vision? Cool. Um, our vision was to make the next backyard sport compete with Can Jam spike ball and make be the next one. Um, and our vision was just to grow it and become the best, biggest, you know, backyard sport in the world. And we're on pace for that. And, uh, it's, it's a really awesome feeling. And we stuck with the vision since day one, we knew since we brought it to that beach and we had kids lining up to play with us, we knew, we knew the product was going to be a success. So we just had to really, you know, get a core team, be strong and just push through and, and keep growing and growing our brand. How many years has it been? Cause I know, it's been like a crazy come. I feel, and maybe it's always like that, that it seems faster on the outside and slow on the inside, but how many years has it been? And how did you guys get growth so fast? I feel like it's, it's come like from the outside, yeah. it looks like it just popped off. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. That's what most companies, you know, you see pop off, but right. they've actually been in business for a decade. Right. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So it's been about four and a half years. Um, and we grew really fast actually overnight um, in 20, what was the COVID year? 2019, I think it was. Yeah. 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 So we, our revenue was like really solid 2019. We did good. We were doing a good job. A video on Facebook went viral. We woke up and there was, uh, there was four, you know, professional volleyball players playing in Latvia and it went viral on Facebook. We woke up 10 million views. Some random Joe Smell posted it. I can't even find Sick. it anymore. Um, and it went viral. And then we woke up, we were getting orders. We're like, holy, holy shit. This is like, this is the momentum. So we kept riding it and riding it. And then COVID hit. Um, and it just, we 500 extra our business. Um, and it's, it's been a wild ride since. So COVID, wow, COVID, so COVID, COVID really helped you guys more than hurt. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause everyone's bored at home, you know, trying to do stuff with their family, yeah. not allowed to leave their house, um, you know, to go play with their friends. Right. So they, everyone has them in their backyard set up, you know? I'm sure. Dang, that's it's pretty so do, surprising. So do you guys see like a tournament coming up soon? Or have you guys already hosted a tournament? Sorry, They've like done I the said. ESPN. Oh, right. Of course. Of course. My bad. My bad. Jeez. Sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of out of loop sometimes over, overseas here. No, that's a cool That's a cool topic though um, to touch on because we did the ESPN tournament. It was awesome. Like great turnout. Um, really cool. You know, hit ESPN and we had some great rallies. But um, the problem with like a, a sport game like us is we kind of jumped the ship, right? And we tried to like hit up all the volleyball community and get them to come play. But we've something as a business owner, like for other business owners listening is like, don't jump, don't jump the ship too fast, grow your community first, 
grow your fans, grow your followers, um, rather than trying to skip a step and just become a professional sport for a game that is brand new. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was tough. We tried, we tried to go straight to volleyball community straight off the bat in like 2018, 2019. We got no respect. Volleyball people are like, what the hell is this? Um, it eventually took two, like three, four years for volleyball people to be like, okay, this is cool. I'll play. I'll warm up to this. I'll compete in it. So yeah, it's been a fun journey and we're still learning. I was going to ask that because I, I just had a couple questions about like your business and your the business model. And I saw we played it actually last summer with Taylor Crab, Troy Field um, and those guys. They brought it out to the park one day. I think they're shooting a promotional video for you guys. And I just wanted to ask how you got involved with some of like the upper level AVP guys and like what made you choose certain people over others and. Good question. Um, definitely my social team handles, handles all that kind of business, but we, we got into it um, with some certain good connections first. I think like Donald Suhu, um, he, he played and he connected those, he connected the dots with us to start off with like getting into involved with that. And obviously money talks. So if we're going to give people money to make promotional videos, um, let's do it. So we started making good relationships, good friendships with people. Um, some of the content that, that you can see that sticks around longer um, is because we decided to go with those people because not only their social media following, but just the way they, you know, they conduct their business with us and how they love CrossNet more than others. No, no shots to anyone else, but like you'll see, like uh, Sam Pedlow get, gets mad love from us, and he he does he does so much for us. So um, Troy Fields is cool on social. He's he's kind of different when it comes to like that YouTube TikTok style. So people like that, they'll stick around with us more more than usual. And and you guys, for some reason, you you guys have a do you guys have a version that goes in the pool? I don't know why I have that. Yeah, yeah, we have an H two O model. We have an H two O model, and that's been super successful. We actually sold out last year in like two weeks, and we were shooting ourselves in the foot because we didn't order enough inventory. Holy and cow! That's freaking ridiculous. Yeah, you guys are. I mean, I think everybody know. Everybody's heard across that. You guys are at every event, outdoors and indoors. We were at all the same events that you guys had sent a team to. Yeah, um, we were across from that same guy like three different times. <clears throat> Yeah, where were you guys playing? Because we're on the you were, we're on the USA VP tour, uh, AVP, I think. We so. were in Pottstown. I know there are neighbors in Pottstown, and we had a huge, we had a pretty big line in Pottstown to play, and then at USA, no, at USA Juniors, USA Juniors, USA Juniors. yeah, they yeah, were there. Junior Nationals, they were our neighbors as well. Alpaca, well, 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 and then one other well, one. Well, Pack, I swear they were right across from us. They might have been, or you guys were. I should say you guys were. <laughs> yeah. What are your goals? So going into this summer, what is for your guys' company? Like, what are some things that you guys have going on for the business? Yeah. So we have a bunch of new products coming out that I can't say right now, but Aww. they're very cool. Um, we are dominating. We're going to try to dominate this four square space and just come up with a whole bunch of in, like innovative products. As you may have seen, we're launching the cross net for soccer um, in a few months super excited for that it's going to be more of like a training tool necessarily from my perspective than like kind of a game uh, soccer is obviously the biggest sport so uh, it'll be good it'll be good to see that grow and then from the in inside business you know kind of model we're, we're we're big in wholesale we have a bunch of wholesale deals coming out this year that we're excited to expand on and, and keep selling in there and then from what you guys have seen is like we've gone to like the usa juniors and these volleyball events but like i was saying we kind of lost our focus of trying to hit that parent, right. Who's actually buying in our is 99% of our consumers that that mom or dad, or that, you know, that college kid. So we're going to go back to trade shows, get more camps, um, kind of get involved there and, and let the, let the youth, you know, play cross net and let it become a legacy product for them. You know, when they grow up, they're still playing cross net. So you guys are trying to hit every single sport eventually. I mean, I don't know if you're allowed to say that, but eventually is that something that's crossed your mind? Um, no pun intended. Yeah, that crosses my mind every day. And uh, we are going to do that as much as we can, as many net games. Obviously, you can foresee what we have coming out with four nets and what games you can put behind them. Um, right. But we want to make sure we launch them properly and, and not just half-ass it. That's smart. Totally. I think that's awesome. Is there any – so spike ball, I don't know. To be honest, when you guys first came out, I don't know why I tied you guys together. I don't know if it was the color of the netting Colors. or whatever it was. With me. But it was A lot of people. It was something. Yeah. The black and yellow. And what they've they've done a really good job of creating like the community that you're talking about, and they've built like leagues and tournaments everywhere. Like they and so I imagine that's kind of like where you guys are trying to go with your guys' system is 
developing are you guys getting involved like universities or are you guys going to be creating leagues and doing more tournaments this summer or are you guys focus more on just working at like clinics and stuff like that and then yeah good question yeah yeah so we're definitely trying to build our community you know and in like, the company like spike has done a great job uh, but we want to grow it in ways different than just forcing tournaments on people, right? So like we have this CrossNet U program and it's our college athletes we pay to give us content and they get make money. Um, we let it we let it happen organic now. So if someone wants to do a tournament and they come to us, you know, we'll give them the rights license and they can go host it and make their money. Uh, but we're not going to force any tournaments this year. Next year probably is, is our vision for that. But we really want to build the sport first, let people understand it because, you know, like, your parents are walking past across it. They don't know how to, how to play it probably. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I want everyone to know how to play it first before we start really diving into that tournament and really going, you know, going crazy on that. I, I have to ask the question because when we were playing it, we were playing it this past time with Taylor and Troy. And the one thing that came up all the time was when you would hit the ball over and it would go under another one. Yep. That, are you guys yep. considering adding lines or is that just going to be stick to no, part so, of the rules? So we had lines, we had lines uh, two years ago, three years ago. Um, in the middle, um, product cost, it added product cost to the, to the game itself, which is stupid, but the lines are actually made by the volleyball net itself. Right. And if it goes mm -hmm. under, it doesn't actually matter because if it goes under, it still went through that person's square and the person right. square that it went through is out. So adding lines adds product cost is actually not needed. And it's another step of setup. So we took those out. Okay. The question. Yeah. Cause like that's one question. Every, every, everyone, like every volleyball player is like, that's the only thing that happens. And we're like, ah, shit. Like it's hard to stop, but if it goes through your square, you're out. Right. That's right. Yeah, Cause yeah. that's the totally. entrance point and it's your responsibility to get it back out. I was thinking that same, but, but also another rule was the poles count. Yeah. Poles count. And, and that was like something that became something that was a pretty big argument. Cause yeah, yeah. it's Y'all kind of unstoppable at shot. some point. Yeah. It's a trick yeah, shot. Yeah, It's a kill <laughs> shot. It's like, I was like, no freaking chance. It's got to be like antenna, and they're like, nope, that's that's it. We that's actually it. just came out with this cool rule book guide that we're gonna launch, we're gonna put out to the on the website, and you know, everyone that plays the game, it's really like, you can really understand it, and like, right, right. Go, it, just like the NBA, you can go look up the NBA rules and stuff. Right. So, so when it, because like, I mean, a board game would come with the rules, a rule book in it, but this one would be online, or it would become. Yeah, well, like, it's very hefty. It's very hefty. So we we have a rule book, but oh. it's like. It's half assed, like, and we, we have to do it better. So we're we're just getting to the world. You know, we're in the world of you know digital age and QR codes. Yeah, so we're gonna probably yeah. put in our new new systems coming out in the Smart. end of this year and next year. QR code rules pop up, gameplay, how to play, so everyone knows how to do it, even on the net itself. So if you're like a new, you're a rookie, or you're someone at the beach that's setting it up for the first time, and you set it up, and you're like, wait, how do we play this? QR code on the net, boom, rules pop up in your face. Nice. That'd be Smart. sweet. That'd be super helpful, especially like. In the moment when you're in a discussion, an argument, and you're like, dude, pull it up, pull up the rules, pull up the rules. That's going to yeah. be a whole nother thing. You should have yeah. some sort of challenge system where it's like you can only pull up the rules like for one thing, a game. Uh, where it's like, one <laughs> so you got to know them, and it's like, ah, you already used your challenge, Bonner and you're wrong about that. And so you That's can't. Cool, yeah. That'd be hilarious. That's a cool idea. We actually have it in the rules that it, the, if the play can't be decided, it's called the showdown, and it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. And uh, it's like a oh, jump ball. Oh, that's no sick. That decides whoever, you know, messed up or whatever. Right, right, right. I like that. The showdown. Is there ever a rule? Like, what's the most common rule that you see through videos or just in person that you see people either doing it wrong or they, or a strategy that you see people, that's a good or a bad thing that that's they a good should do? Double, double hitting it is, kills me, right? Like yeah. the, they box that spike it to themselves. Like, that's not how we envision our game to be played. Right. But uh, all people want to you know so that's more of a house rule but it's always one touch for each person um but the bump set spike to themselves is definitely uh makes me cringe sometimes <laughs> I was gonna, dude, no, I that's a really good question because sometimes you create something and then other people are doing it completely wrong you're like god this is not the way I want but as long as they're it. enjoying it you know and right. playing this playing it properly like that's okay with me like it's, it's growing but it's a it'll be a learning curve it leaves that, it leaves some room for creativity as well. Like, yeah, people can have their own house rules. Or like, oh, here we play two touch. Exactly. Like, and you want to keep it like that because when yeah. you guys grew up playing four square, right? Probably. Um, yeah, I for did. Sure. I would rush. I would rush to the four square every day before re uh, lunch, right? And I'd do the black magic and throw the ball out, whatever the hell is cherry bombs <laughs> and, <stuff. laughs> yeah. and like the holds. I remember some people yeah. would just like hold it like for too long. Oh. Like that. That's way too long. Yeah, yeah. House rules. House rules are always fun. Yeah, so, house rules are fun. 
is there something that it morphed into or like a rule that you saw or like a style of game that you didn't see coming that it actually turned into? So like kind of the opposite of what I just asked. Wait, repeat that again. What do you mean so is there something, so for example, like, like you said, there's like a rule that you hate, like you hate the two or three touches and obviously that style of play. Is there like a, something that cross has morphed into or something that people added to it that you actually like, Oh, I didn't see this coming, but this is definitely a big plus for the game. Yeah. So over like, we eventually incorporated the doubles version, the doubles net. Right. You guys have seen that. So that, yeah. that's been really cool to me because I've never, I never really wanted the, it to go that way. Um, right. But my, my my partners, Chris and Mike, they wanted it like that. And and they're right because more, you know, you want to play with your, your teammate too at the end of the day, not just solo dolo. So that, that's been a cool um, experience for me to just be like, wow, doubles is awesome, actually awesome. And the doubles, I feel like ultimately the doubles is the move. Yeah. Ultimately, you want this to turn in, I mean, beach kind of party atmosphere you want it to turn into some sort of drinking game maybe or is that pushing it Ooh, is that like no that that's kind of that's not pushing it i i don't drink but we have a cool collab possibly coming out this summer um okay with one of the bigger uh drinking accessories in the world so Ooh. i'm excited hopefully hopefully soon have not you heard of the of the the beach volleyball drinking game called ace yes i have but I don't play volleyball, so I've never participated. Dude, you've <laughs> got you got to play it one time. Oh, you have to drink that. though. Yeah, but he can still play. He can still play. Yeah, you can still That's play. True. You just play you on just a team. I just have yeah. somebody that carries. <laughs> <laughs> Joe has no, carried exactly. quite a few times. Car- no, carries no, no, no. actually. That's a that's a good talking point too for like what happens in cross net. Like people carry all the time in it. I carry all the time, and I didn't actually know it was a carry for like three years, and then like. One of the volleyball guys were like, "Yo, you know, you're carrying it. Like, does that count?" I'm like, what do you mean? Because I would. Like, I invented the game. That's hilarious. But it's like, no, it's not a carry. It's my yeah. game. This yeah. is how you play. Yeah. So me and my my circle, we all carry, right? And then uh, okay, we leave it because that's how we. That's how we. Yeah, the that's game. how you. For people that don't sick. play volleyball, right? Right, right. How uh, how good are you at the game? Like, do people challenge you? Like, how good are you at? at yeah, uh, I'm at, game? I'm at, I'm pretty I'm pretty good. Um. I've definitely stopped playing over the years. I've gotten, you know, I used to play crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, me right. and my other partner, Mike, he's good. Chris sucks. Um, Mike's Mike's <laughs> good. Mike always finds a way to win. He always just stands there and just like hits it down or some, some trick shot. Um, but we're, we're pretty solid. We, we Can we beat the pros in volleyball? Probably not. Um, we've tried once or twice, but uh, I think I got a ball to the face from uh, Casey Patterson one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got that from Taylor Crab as well. He yeah. wailed me in the face. It's crazy because, like, when we had we were doing like those photo shoots down in like Long Beach or wherever, um, I've never seen eight pro athletes, volleyball athletes, play cross net before. I've seen like one in a square, two in a square, but all eight going at it, it was unreal. Like, it was it was crazy. I was like, what the hell? Like, what did I just make here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty hilarious. Like, it's sick that somebody not within volleyball made it. Because it's like, then you get pushed into this realm of sport that you probably weren't involved in or didn't know much about and then you see them playing your sport and you're like wait like this is like really high level like of what something i didn't even realize could be yeah no it it is cool and it's it's honestly um it's really humbling too because like i grew up playing basketball like if i made a basketball game right um and i'm just like chilling with lebron james right it's it's awesome like that's unreal so this is really cool to just be interacting with these people and not be like fanboying i guess the word is um and just being being cool and really like learning with them about the culture. I'm really learning about volleyball. Like before I, we launched CrossNet, I could probably name one volleyball athlete. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. So now I can name a shit ton. So it's really cool learning the culture, learning how you guys operate and, and the business itself. And I want to help volleyball too, because the more volleyball grows, the more CrossNet grows. A hundred percent. Who? What, is, what said, have been some... Oh, go ahead, Joe. No, I, I was just going to add on to what he just said because he had mentioned that you want to turn this into a professional sport is what I hit, heard earlier. Is that correct? Yeah, de- definitely. Down the line, we this, we want this to be a, a real legit sport, um, similar to what you see on Spike Ball. Like they, they have the ESPN tournaments and constant like just tournaments. Um, so yeah, definitely we want to grow it to be a, a big sport one day. But like I said earlier, it's like we got to slow down, grow the community, grow the sport first, and then it'll, it'll eventually take itself there. That's what awesome. are some things that you've like? Because we are a volleyball podcast. What are some things that you've noticed about the volleyball community um, that you've picked up? on that you appreciate that you don't appreciate just like in general what are your overall thoughts as an out like as a person coming into it yeah so um 
when I first started, I thought all the volleyball people were assholes. Not going to lie. Cause we set up a cross net one time at the beach. No one played it for our first. We went to like this, uh, just this event jamboree, maybe an AVP or something. We paid like 500 bucks, a lot of money for us back then. And, uh, we set it up for the first two days. No one played, not one volleyball player played. And we were just like, what's going on right now? Yeah, like, these are lame. And, and so we like, we said, screw it. We'll leave the net up. And we came back in like eight hours. There was like a, a tournament going on in the cross net <laughs> for, the loser, for the loser's bracket. And then we eventually got friendly with them. And, and then I learned the culture a little bit more. Um, some people are definitely still stuck up, I feel like, in the, in the volleyball community oh, yeah. compared to like, a, a, I don't know, there's different vibes for each, you know, sport that is there is um, there's completely different cultures yeah so like when i play basketball every day right i'm used to like having people try to start fights right like so it's a yes, little different yeah so those people are the assholes in their own ways too so that's my first take of volleyball but then i learned the culture started loving all the players and like really having making good connections with them um and realizing that the sport is not as big as i thought like when it comes to money right, right. a lot of people struggle yeah. like a living playing volleyball they're out working a full-time job going home on the weekends weekdays practicing to be the pros they, they want to be right and it's it's really it sucks to see because i'm in that world now and i want to help that space as much as possible but it's it's very difficult and you know when you don't have big money behind it it's it's tough so there's struggles 100%. to being a volleyball player and i respect the hell out of all the people that like wake up every day and train and then go to work and then yeah. have a family you know it's crazy so that's what's you interesting about the volleyball community is like you it really comes down to people that just love the sport Cause they're not doing it like it's not like you were raised like oh if I if I play volleyball like I can get my family out of this right. like, or I can do it's I can like, keep no, my family. No. In the- I like literally yeah. play because I like the sport and there's yeah. no other reason why I do it, which I think is like really cool and like it keeps it pretty genuine. Um, yeah, no, it at is the higher levels super authentic. Yeah, yeah, at the higher like, but yeah. it's interesting that you say that there's a lot of pricks because like we've realized it too when we're going around that like, it's kind of like the, the middle tier people that are actually like the mean people and that are really stuck up. And then it's like the really high level people are like very authentic and the really like low level people, but it's people in the middle that think that like the semi pros kind of that are like super stuck up. And we're like, dude, what are you guys like? What's your guys deal? That's funny. That's funny. You say that. Yeah. I I mean, I can relate to it. I've been, you know, I've seen it, but yeah. uh, At the end of the day, the volleyball community is crazy and they're super passionate about, I've never seen another sport like that. Um, you know, super. you can't make it in basketball or football, right? You, you stop playing the sport, right? Yeah. Volleyball, <laughs> you just keep going. Yeah, so yeah. it's really cool to see that. Big time. Yeah. It's a huge thing for us. You know, like even last summer we'd go to the beach, we just create different games all the time. So it's kind of funny that you literally create a business out of that. Um, you just kind of thought of some games like all the time we would go to the beach and create stuff. And so, we uh we're all for like the the creative rules of crossnet because we hate rules in general like people ask us the lifts and the doubles and we don't like calling any of that stuff ever when we play games and so we appreciate which is creative. opposite of the volleyball okay. community which can be completely yeah. opposite sorry to cut you off joe no he's totally right and like mike was just talking about we ran to people in different tournaments because last year we, and we do this every summer we go on a five-week tour um and we attend like the biggest events that's why we ran into your guy a lot, and uh, and we play in him too. And we just had some people in certain areas. It's like these random people trying to call every single thing, and we don't think it's really beneficial to the sport of volleyball. And I think a game like cross set, for sure, is uh, there's like benefit to that. Just like any type of like hand eye coordination, like ball controlled type of drill, I think is super beneficial to the sport of volleyball. And I think if you play that, you like you can find ways um to get um just better at something um every single time we say that all the time like you can fi- you can find a way to get better in every single drill every single activity um that you're doing if you like put your mind to it and you focus on certain things so i think like a game like cross net is super beneficial people are like oh it's four square it doesn't really like have volleyball um it doesn't have like the same lines it doesn't have the same concept but like if you really put your mind to it like there's ways to get uh benefit out of playing the cross net so that's super yeah, sick and, yeah uh, there is and, and uh going off of that we're in like over ten thousand schools now and when we i grew up playing uh and going the you know pe class right in gym class um we play volleyball and it would be like 15 on 15 right the gym teacher would just put them on each <laughs> side and 
and 90 percent of the class I, i'm running my ass off trying to hit every ball right but like yeah, that exactly. shy, nobody's that, touching that, it yeah that shy girl that shy dude is like just staying chilling like not touching it not getting any touches but we now they incorporate cross net before they play volleyball so they get touches like a lot of touches way more than volleyball right. and they get comfortable with it and they have to because it's coming at their face in their solo square so it's up to them. So that's really cool to see in the PE classes. Like they're really learning volleyball through cross net. Essentially some of, some of the people, that's what we gotten from feedback. Um, and you get a lot of touches, you know, bump set, spike it, learn it, practice it, then bring it over to the real court. I think it's genius. I, we've always like preached for short court and all these things where it's only you and a partner and you get a lot of touches and it's like creative and stuff like that. Do you ever get frustrated with like, the constant comparison with volleyball do you want it to be its own thing like because i would feel like dude but it's also like cross net like i'd be like if i made something i'm like it's not just volleyball guys like or or do you enjoy it and that's completely okay it doesn't it doesn't bother me anymore i mean when we first started we had like no idea about the volleyball world right we were just trying to make a backyard game right right because like for like college boys right um and then it eventually took off and, and got more volleyball focused right rather than four square focus. So this year we're really trying to just pump out the four square, four square, four square, um, and, and really grow that more than trying to, you know, pump the volleyball necessarily, right. but yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. And it's wouldn't it be around if there wasn't volleyball. So, um, we got to play respects to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it has a big, big part of the success. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, well, Greg, we don't want to keep you too long. We just want to say we are very, very happy. We got to put, we got to, uh, I know Micah, spoke about one of the times we got to play cross net, but we actually played a handful of times along our tour, whether it was at the tournaments or we had friends who had the actual game and everything. So we were, we were in Georgia, Atlanta, playing it from in the pitch uh, pitch dark, playing cross net with, uh, with a family we had just met, and uh, we were just playing with them. We had we had an NFL player out there playing with us, and it was just all a, a great time and everything. <laughs> And um, but again, we're very, very grateful as volleyball community. Like I said, there can be some assholes out there but from the good guys out there. Uh, we thank you for creating this game. And like I said, we can't wait for the for the rest of the games and for us to get back in the States and uh, get some more cross net action. Appreciate it, man. And hopefully I can solve your uh, pitch black cross net problems this year. Um, stay tuned Ooh. for that. Ooh, I like yeah. that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, we were using we were using the headlights, but. The headlights, yeah, that can go. You can go blind from that, though. Oh like, yeah, hundred percent. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I got hit in the face a lot, but it's okay. Yeah, so it's okay. We're Love trying to get because usually when people are playing, you know, it's right before dinner, it gets dark. You want to keep playing, so right. we got to fix it. That was a big problem Smart for man. me growing up. Going to stay Smart out there man. too long. We All right, no guys, you're going to fix it. Thank you. Take care. Have a good time in your countries you're in, and good luck. Thanks, right. man. Cheers, brother. Take All care. Right. Thanks, Ed. Crossnet, baby. Two words, crossnet. Well, crossnet's one word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, crossnet, baby. Two words. I said crossnet, baby. All right, yeah. Good save. Sure, whatever, man. Like I said, hey, it's getting late here. That's when Gage gets real weird. <laughs> it's getting that time. It's getting weird. <laughs> it's getting weird. No, it's getting like, that's crazy. That they're just like, oh, yeah, volleyball, four, four, uh, four square volleyball. I'm like, they blew up. Yeah, they did. They did. They're smart. They went after the big people, and uh, they got the big people to promote it, and they went to the youth, and they just set up a net. If you know anything about anyone, if you just set something up, just leave it. Especially at youth events, kids will go crazy for it. But then yeah. you got to watch out because they'll rip it. Apart. All of your stuff's broken. Exactly. But it's worth back. it. Great advertising. That's what happened to us. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Short Court. Like, what in the heck happened here? Well, let, let, well, also, let's cut into it. Joey, big news in the German League. Big news. Yeah, Friedrichshafen beats Berlin in the cup semifinal. So we play Friedrichshafen. Berlin's first loss of the season. That's Ever, any so Champions wild. League, German League, anything. The first loss of the year. It comes, wild. But that's, dude, I kept telling my teammates because Berlin has history of losing in the cup. To like They lose at Lunenburg. They lost to Kooning's Roosterhausen last year. He was last. <laughs> they, for some reason, the cup just bites him in the butt. And uh, all my teammates are like, oh, no way Berlin loses. I'm like, bro, watch Friedrichshafen. Sure enough. Hey. So you play Friedrichshafen in the finals. Neutral site. My when? old club. Uh, March 6th. Saturday, Sunday. So the cool thing about the cup is they play the men's and the women's final in the same building back to back. So all four fan bases are in the stadium or in the arena. It's a 15,000 person arena because of Corona. 
they're only allowing like 3,000, which doesn't make sense. And you're like, dude, you can figure out a way to get eight to 9,000 in there if you really want it. And they usually sell out the place. Really? The cup final. Usually they do. Like if you, wow. historically, they sell out the arena. I'm like, dude, the COVID stuff, we can't get too much into here because we can't, we'll get flagged if we start talking about like COVID. <laughs> if we start talking about COVID stuff, YouTube flags you. Um, but I'm like, if people want to go to the match, let them go to the match. I just will say that. Let them go to the match. Wear masks, vaccinate. Dude, let people go watch the match. They're they're renting out this big ass arena for nothing. So to spread them out, <laughs> spread them. Dude, you could easily distance like eight thousand in a tw- in like a fifteen thousand person arena. You could distance eight thousand easily. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. People in the same households. Like, yeah, but they don't want to be in the nosebleeds though, too. At the same time. No, you can do 15,000 person arena. Think how big that is. Yeah, I'm thinking it's of huge. 10,000. You Good could point. easily fit half, like half capacity. You could make it work. Yeah, you could. So we're playing Friedrichs off in the final, March 6th. Big one. German Cup final. Be sick. Let's one go. match. We're the Bergen Boys. The next Let's month, we're just forfeiting go. the rest of the matches. <laughs> we're forfeiting all the rest of the matches. We're just getting ready for that one. <laughs> That's so sick. The well, big match. <laughs> you also got your first yellow, yeah? I did get my first yellow card. What happened? Yeah, my. Uh, we had a really bad refing crew, and I was and our head coach. Our head coach usually doesn't like if I yell at the refs, but our head coach was had COVID, so he wasn't there. <laughs> so <laughs> I was yelling at the refs the whole day. They were so bad, and the guy didn't speak English, and he kept telling me that was a crime, man. And he just kept telling me to. Uh, Stop complaining, all this, all this. And then one time I, I just walk over to him and he, before I even said anything, he just like gives me the hand. He's like, you need to relax. And I'm like, you've been relaxing all game, bro. And he just gives me an immediate yellow, yellow card for that. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I didn't you've even swear You've been relaxing all game, bro. <laughs> That's so sick, dude. Yellow card. And then, oh, this is it was 13-10 in the fifth. We, we didn't play super well. We got into a fifth set. We won the match. 13-10. The ref, the down ref, had been like trying to just make calls all day, and he got overturned a bunch. But he's just like trying to make calls that were not not his calls. This one was his call, but it was just a dumb call. Our outside hits the ball. The ball clearly hits the ground, and then he like falls over the line. Like he waited for the ball to hit the floor, and then he fell over. Tries to call under, and I just go straight to him, and I'm like in his face, and he was so mad. He's blowing the whistle in my face. No way. Call, <laughs> Blowing yeah, the, the whistle, whistle in, my in your face? Hey. Boop. <laughs> and he, the up ref calls him because the up ref luckily saw that the guy landed for he because he was going to ask. He's like, I think that he landed. They ended up overturning. But like the way that the down ref reacted, like Dalton, there's a video of Dalton taking me, like shoving me away. He's like, don't you dare get a red card here. Like another yellow. <laughs> he told me that and he like shoved me away. Like, I'm not going to get another yellow. I'm not gonna do it. You're speaking English, yo. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. You know yeah, that's saying. the other thing is they they speak German to me sometimes, and I just shake my head. Like, Dude, it's the I worst. Understand. It's it's their easiest. No, I out, I can man. understand usually what they're saying. I always yeah, don't know what the they're worst. saying. They just like I know you speak English. I've talked to you in English this whole game, and then all of a sudden I have a complaint, and you're like, I don't speak English. I'm like, bro, you freaking you fricka. Speaking of Hawaiian, hey, you guys ever? I, here's a question for you, setters. You guys ever heard a green card before? Yeah, yeah if fair you play. call your own thing, dude. What the hell? All right, first off, first off, this is the <laughs> funniest thing to me. I learned all of a sudden, Jory, our setter, who's infamous for just first of all, uh, there's so many stories I could tell. Who's infamous for just getting reds? Yeah, well, not getting anything called, but going ballistic, ballistic at the refs. All of a sudden, he calls his own for the first time all season. He calls his own thing. I was dying laughing. They give him the green card, and the whole gym just like applauds. I'm like, let like congratulate. I'm like, what the hell is going on? But the thing is, it's like, but it's like, it's like the first good thing he's done all season. Everyone's just like, oh, great job, Jordan. And they're all serious too. Like, and the refs won't call him. On, like, there were times where he takes it off his left shoulder, dunks it on his right shoulder, and I see the ref about to give the other point, but then they realize it's Jory, and then they give us the point or something like that. <laughs> I just, I just like start laughing. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like it just, it just, it just known. And then like he does one good thing, and he he'll spend the rest of the match just yelling at the ref, just like ballistically. And then he does one good thing, and everyone just like, "Great job, Joe!" It's the whole crowd. It's so funny. It oh, is so man. funny. 
He just owns Dude, the country. You know why? The Eastern Europeans are so. I learned this from Milan Zarkovic, our coach at Hawaii. They're very good at this. You have to understand this. So what they do is when they like when it's clear they're gonna lose a set or it's clear that they're like not in yeah, that yeah, set, they give the- they'll call something late so that way the next set when it's close and they say they didn't touch it, like you'd be like, they oh, but I told the truth the whole game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bro. And they're super good at that. That's that's probably exactly what he was doing. He's like. We're getting blown out this set. He'll call yeah, something. Dude, for sure. You get some points for sure. He has standing ovation. He, the ref goes to shake his hand. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. I've go never to, seen somebody shake, shake a dude, hand. Dude, it's I've like, seen, they, like the I've metal. seen green cards, but never somebody shake. Dude, I swear to God, dude. It's like it's like a parade was held. He did one. And they <laughs> they <laughs> shook his hand? <laughs> he shook his hand, dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude, I swear to God, I'm just like laughing all the time. Dude, you need to find the video of this. Gage, there's so much video you haven't gotten for us. The serve and then this. Dude, you I need to get. I hope my scout doesn't watch this. Dude, I asked my scout, hey, can I see my files? And I was like, and he knows that I can't, and I can only see the MP4. He said, I was like, can I see my passes? He sent me the whole match in a non MP4 file. I'm just like, and it, it like five days later. It's just like, trust he, me, dude. He knows you can't see it if it's not. Dude, he knows. So I had to download <laughs> the second dairy software to watch my own damn games, and then I have to finally, like, and I have to, and I can't like skip very easily in in the software. It's just a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Um, but uh, before we rapidly rapidly up here, I want to give a shout out to Manscape. Got a Manscape story for you. About three weeks ago. Okay. I want to get first of all. I want to show mad love to Manscaped. That's why I'm telling this story. But three weeks ago, I say, Gage, you're gonna get a massage. I say, okay. What do you mean I'm gonna get a massage? They're like, okay, we got this, this very very well known Bulgarian. The whole team got one. A very very well Bulgarian. Uh, she works with the top wrestlers in Bulgaria, like world champions and blah blah. And she's just a beast, a beast, right? So there I am, and she and they say, hey, Gage. Better watch out. She um uh, she's been she sometimes grazes your lower area. If you get what I'm saying, Joey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Aka my uh my my sack. You know, for 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 better term there. And um, so I'm like, okay, you know, I'm getting a massage, full body. I should definitely manscape. You know what I'm saying? So I manscaped for this massage, so I'm just absolutely clean shaven. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I get in the massage, and I'm in my underwear, like I said. Shout out to Manscaped. And she gets all lotioned up. And all of a sudden, the first thing, whew, she goes straight for the groin. Straight. And I swear to God, <laughs> for an hour and a half, it was a all, there was no boundaries at all. And I mean no boundaries. And let me tell you, she grazed my lower parts at least 40 times for an hour straight. And you know why I want to give a quick shout out to Manscaped when talking about this? Because I guarantee you out of all 14 of my teammates, my body was the smoothest to work because I had Manscaped. And I was smooth as it gets, baby. And let me tell you, it made for, I wouldn't say an enjoyable experience, but a more enjoyable experience if I... Had it manscaped. So again, Joe, get in the promo code. Volleyballs, all caps. All cap, no cap. So again, if you're getting a massage, make sure you manscaped for that more enjoyable experience. And remember, if you can't handle the heat, goddamn kitchen. This has been another episode presented by Out of System.